The standard form of container used to hold dry goods in the 18th and 19th century was a pantry box. The Shakers did not invent the oval box. What they did was refine it to a level that it was more successful and repeatable. The Shakers decided on the oval form because they felt that the interior and exterior were more adaptable to containing different things and being stored in different ways. The Shakers looked at the pantry box and saw that in its construction, it had flaws. The flaw usually had to do with the way that the overlapping sides of the box were joined. The rims, the shakers called the sides the rim, had a propensity to buckle and crack over time. This occurred because there is a normal organic response to seasonal conditions that wood goes through. The shakers developed a, a unique form of lapping or overlapping one part of the, uh, of the bent wood body of the box to the other. These swallowtails, the shakers called them swallowtails, most people today called them fingers, were secured to the box in a manner spaced as this to allow for this seasonal expansion and contraction of the wood. So a box such as this that was produced in the mid 19th century fits as easily and as tightly as one that was produced today. These boxes were made generally of maple and pine, though this varied upon availability of woodstock and eventual use of the box. There, there are examples with cherry bodies. There are examples of mahogany bodies. The last male shaker at Mount Lebanon, Brother William Perkins, built 52 boxes in mahogany till he gave up in disgust at the difficulty he was having trying to bend the material. But most often the boxes were fabricated in the form we see here, the bodies of the boxes, the rims, were thin, flat pieces of planed maple. These pieces were cut to size on templates that allowed for the overlapping swallowtails and the placements of the copper rivets that would secure them together. Once these were cut to size, the bodies were immersed in hot water or were subjected to, to steam in order to make them pliable. Then they were rapidly wrapped around a form and secured by the, the addition of the copper rivets. The top and bottom boards of the boxes were called the heading. The heading was, was cut after the forms were dry and, and secured by copper points or brads along the rim. Made this way, the boxes prevented deterioration of contents or accessibility to insects. The Shakers made these boxes in most communities, but their desirability by the world caused the communities of New Lebanon, Canterbury, Sabbath Day Lake, Alfred and South Union to produce them in large quantities for resale. The Shakers arrived at a standardization not only of form but of size. These boxes were made, sold individually, or in nesting stacks. They generally could fit one within another in another in the fashion of Russian nesting dolls. The practice of making the boxes and making them for resale started in the late 18th century. It was one of the first forms the Shakers came to, to standardize and produce 
for the outside world. These boxes continued to be desired and consumed by the world until about the end of the Civil War, and thousands and thousands were produced. What we find most compelling about the boxes today is not only the forms, but the way that the, the Shakers and the world treated the boxes in a manner to protect the wood. It was common for the Shakers to put a finish on these boxes that was, that was brilliant in color. And it is those boxes that we find so compelling today and so interesting and so collectible. The Shaker world was simple. The Shaker world was pure. The Shaker world was full of light. And the Shaker world was full of color. They adorned not only the outer surfaces of their furniture, but of even their small objects with this color. Though the colors over years changed in meaning, the colors that they employed predominantly were the reds and the yellows and the greens and the blues that, that we find not only in their dwellings, in their furniture, in their chairs, but also in their boxes. Mm -hmm.